Hello and welcome to this video where we teach you how to set up an acoustic guitar. So in this video we're going to show you two methods. I'm going to do more of a home based method, cheap tools and things that you can find around the house. And I'm going to take a more professional approach using tools that are easily attainable on places like Amazon. As always, all links hit in the description below. The first step in this process is to remove the strings. The beauty of owning a basic set of guitar maintenance tools and accessories really does make each setup stage that much easier, which is why I went for the more professional setup approach. Whereas I went with the budget friendly, but more time consuming, by hand approach. The main thing here is to remember not to cut the string straight off the guitar, as this will relieve far too much tension off the neck far too quickly and could cause damage. Either completely unwind each tuner, one at a time, and remove the strings carefully, or relieve all tension on the strings before snipping them. Okay then, so lying around the house you may find something like this. Pliers, pincers, something, again from your dad's garage, your dad's toolbox. So you could use just a little bit of paper, toilet roll, kitchen roll, something just to, uh, just to pad it a little bit so it doesn't damage the bridge pin, and obviously remove them very carefully. Do take extra care when removing the bridge pins as they are quite delicate. Paper, kitchen roll or even toilet paper might look like a really amateur approach but it does help protect the bridge pins and the bridge itself. Even using a more professional tool to remove the bridge pins without any protection can cause damage to the bridge itself so for the sake of science I demonstrate that here. I'm going to start by sanding down the rough edges of this uh, fretboard. It's a really thick gloss on the back of this uh, neck and I'm not a massive fan of that so I'm going to just scale that back a bit and, and, and attack it with a bit of sandpaper. My advice is I wouldn't really go any lower than a P320 purely because I think anything under that's a bit too abrasive and will take too much off of the guitar too quickly and it could uh, irreparably damage it. A common trait on a cheap guitar is rough fret ends which are clearly visible on this guitar and as a result can make for a difficult, uncomfortable playing experience. Take a look at these rough fret ends and the fact that they don't even meet the edges of the fretboard. When compared to the smooth quality finish of a Taylor guitar, the scale of the difference is undeniably evident. I also attack the rear of the neck to strip away some of that thick, heavily applied lacquer. Okay, so I've finished the sanding process. I've gone up to a 2000 grit, which I feel is enough. It feels lovely, really. It feels really, really nice. This process has greatly improved those rough fret ends, which, as you can see, are now much smoother. And that thick, sticky, heavy gloss lacquer is now gone. And as a result, we're left with a beautifully smooth satin neck that feels much more comfortable to play. The price of this sandpaper bundle is just £4.99 and, as always, is linked in the description below. I'd like to draw your attention to just how dirty these frets are, as well as the fretboard and how I would go about rectifying these issues. This fretboard is extremely grimy, but um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you how to get uh, grime off a fretboard just using a plectrum. As you can see here, the fretboard is really grimy. So if you get a new plectrum such as this one, with a sharp edge, this will really help remove the grime without damaging the fretboard. Some people use a Stanley knife, but this can really damage your fretboard, whereas a plectrum is just plastic, so it will not damage the wood. So I'm going to do this on each fret, and just to clear them up so until I move on to the next stage. This is a very worthwhile process, and only takes a few minutes to complete. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use this, which is a flat edge. This will just make me see along the fretboard whether the fretboard's level to start with, because then I'm going to level the frets out. As you can see, that's a very level fretboard, so it's not got a bow on it. Yeah, extremely level, so that, we're good with that. I don't have to make any changes to that. The flat edge just shows that the fretboard is perfectly flat. Uh, means it doesn't have a bow in either direction so it's very good to work on it's a good positive about this guitar right guys and girls i just want to interrupt this video right quick like i say when we put the straight edge on the guitar it was perfectly straight i just want to let you know that what happens if it's not straight so if it's bored in either direction all you have to do is turn the truss rod you'll either find it on the base of the guitar like they are on this guitar 
or at the top of the headstock and all you've got to do is turn it in small increments whilst having the straight edge on it so if it's bored this way you need to turn it like that so then it goes straight if you don't when you do the the work that's next on the frets and it and you put the strings on it's going to bow in a certain direction especially when you set it up and it's all going to be to pot you're going to have a lot of fret buzz so you need to make sure that that, that fret is straight with a fret edge before you start the next step so next thing I'm going to use is this which is called a fret rocker which will tell me if there's any uneven frets on the fretboard if there is we'll mark them up and then we'll file it all off so this tells me whether there's any rock within the fret Placing the fret rocker across three frets at a time identifies any high or low points within the frets. If any rocking is identified, I will mark the frets with a sharpie in the spot where the rocking was found, and it can be filed down. See there, there's a, there's a mark. So it's the middle of this fret here, and I just put a little mark there. That yeah. tells me that that needs filing down. I go all the way down the neck doing this. The frets on this guitar are all quite level. With only a few spots needing addressing, this leads us nicely on to filing. This is a typical fret file and will be used to level out the frets that I marked out earlier. Only perform a few passes with the fret file at a time, rechecking your work using the fret rocker to ensure progress is being made leveling out these frets. There you go, now you see that's not rocking anymore, so that means your flat fret's level. And we'll go on to this bit, that's the same. So that fret's done, and then I'll carry on, I'll do the same for these two here, and then we're on to the next stage after that. We also highly recommend using these fretboard protectors. Very simply, place them over the frets, then any risk of slipping off the fret while filing and damaging your fretboard are greatly reduced. As I continue, let's jump back over to Phil and see some fret polishing. Okie doke, so the process is now we're going for the second uh, dirty job before we start cleaning the guitar back up. You you should have this in your house. Pretty much every person will have this in the house. If not, it's not very expensive. You can get it from pretty much every supermarket you can think of. So it's a uh, Brasso metal polish. And all I do is get some kitchen roll, dab a little bit of Brasso onto the kitchen roll and rub on the uh, frets. That brings up all, all, the, uh, all the dirt off the fret. Apply a good amount of pressure as you polish the frets, as this will lift those metal oils grime and dirt from the frets. Change to a new piece of kitchen roll as often as necessary as they do become dirty very quickly. Once this process is completed, grab a few clean pieces of kitchen roll and buff off the polish residue using the same technique. And this will nicely complete the budget polishing stage. And now let's move back over to Rob to see the more professional approach to polishing the frets. Right, so now we're on to the next stage, which is cleaning the, the frets, as well as taking the bit of fret sprout that's come off here. They're just a little bit rough on the edges. So what I'm gonna use are these micro mesh soft touch pads, regular variety pack. They only cost 13 pounds, uh, really cheap, but these they last a while as well, but these really are good. Uh, like I say, you can clean down the edges, clean down the frets. So this is definitely a better option, a safer option as well, I find. In the pack, you get the pads, as well as the grades. So this tells you what course it is, colour chart, so then you always know. So when using the sanding pads, I progress from the brown, which is the most coarse, to the pink, which is the finest. With frets as bad as these, starting with a heavier grade pad is essential. I also turn my attention onto the rough edges, progressing up the pads with them too, then turning my attention to the frets. Remember to also use the fretboard protector again at this stage, and after removing the stubborn grime off the frets, remember to polish up the frets one grade at a time to achieve a highly smooth, clean and shiny set of frets. This will really help your fingers and the strings glide effortlessly over the frets therefore making your guitar much easier to play. And as you can see, the difference is evident. Due to the sanding process and the metal polish residue, along with the fact that this guitar has quite a deep, open grain on the fretboard, we now need to remove all that dirt. I use a little warm soapy water and an old toothbrush to gently lift away the dirt from the fretboard and the more stubborn ingrained dirt that saps away clarity, resonance and sustain that ultimately dramatically affects your guitar tone. I advise carrying out this step every time you change your strings or set up your guitar. Skin from your fingertips, sweat and dust will always accumulate on your guitar between string changes, so don't skip this step. Always remember to only use a little water and keep any fluids well away from any electronics. We're not aiming to give the guitar a bath here. 
And don't worry about drying out the fretboard, as we remedy that in the next stage. Finally, before moving on to the next step, just remember to remove all the moisture from the guitar that was applied during this stage. Okay, doc, so final step then is to reintroduce some moisture into this, uh, this fingerboard as it's absolutely dry as a bone. Very simple, very cheap, a little bit of lemon oil. Apply some lemon oil onto a piece of kitchen roll, then rub it onto the fretboard. This Dunlop lemon oil I'm using here is only £3.99 on Amazon and is again listed in the description below. Let the oil sit on the fretboard for a few minutes, then buff off all excess oil. Leaving excess oil on the fingerboard will transfer it to your frets and strings as well as your fingers, resulting in a dull, dirty, tone sapping guitar. Not to mention the possibility of leaving greasy marks and fingerprints all over your guitar, or even worse, your clothing. Failure to carry out this step correctly completely undoes all the hard work you did in the previous stage, so it's very important that you get this right. There's little differences between the two setups here as I opt for the similar approach. Here I'm using the Fender Fingerboard Remedy which cleans, hydrates and protects the fretboard. It also contains lemon oil and is very similarly priced to the Dunlop lemon oil. Use these fretboard oils sparingly as saturating the fretboard gives you more to buff off as well as creating more waste. As Phil points out an area that I have missed, you can really see how much of the stage revives the fretboard. This will further improve the smoothness of the playability of your guitar. Whilst the fretboard sits for a few minutes, absorbing the much needed moisture, I use this time to clean and condition the rest of the guitar. During this stage, I use the Fender Guitar Cleaner that removes dirt and grime. Again, I apply sparingly and avoid unnecessary waste. Once this stage is completed, I will carry out this process to the back and the sides of the guitar, as well as the rear of the neck, to remove as much dirt as possible before removing the oil previously applied to the fretboard. After these steps, I will polish the whole guitar to make it look brand spanking new. I'm sure you all agree that by this stage, all the small improvements make a massive difference to how the guitar looks but let me confirm that the guitar also feels greatly improved too. So one of the last things I'm going to do is sand down this uh, bridge saddle a little bit, uh, just to lower that action a little bit up towards the top of the neck there. Very important, very, very important that you keep this completely flat as you're sanding. If you start to pop it to one side or the other and sand, it could throw all your intonation out. Using the P120 grit paper from the sandpaper bundle, lay it on a flat surface and as I've just said, keep it perfectly flat and push down firmly when sanding. This stage of the process is exactly the same for both the budget and the more professional setups. This stage may look a little extreme, but just take your time and keep reseating the saddle into the bridge to ensure you aren't sanding too much away. Don't worry if, if you do make a, a mess of this, if you're not even or you sand a bit too much off, all you need to do then is get a bit of cardboard and you just cut off little shims and then you can put as many as you want in and then rest your bridge back on it and it will raise the action. So don't worry if you if you do make a mess of this, it's just worth a, worth a try to get the hang of it. Okay, doc, last but not least, you need a good set of strings and we have been users of elixirs for a long time. I like to go for the tens, it's just a bit easier, uh, less stress on the fingers and everything like that. So these are the elixirs, these are about a mid-range elixir string. There is there is a phosphor bronze as well, which is a slightly nicer string, but going off of the guitar, we thought these would be absolutely perfect for it. So we're gonna go ahead and string up these elixir strings on this guitar now. Elixirs, why we like them is that they have a, a special coating on them, normal string don't. Uh, it does protect them and keep them clean from um, grime. Although we do recommend, if you have time, especially after a gig when you're nice and sweaty, uh, just give the fretboard a, a nice wipe with a microfiber cloth anyway, just to get all the grime off. But these do, it, it does make these last a lot longer. Okay, so one of the first things I established is when uh, taking the strings off this guitar from the factory, the strings themselves weren't uh, locked, but uh, it's just a way of stopping your strings from slipping out of tune a lot more. A lot of cheap companies do it, they quickly throw on a string and send it out of the factory, whereas uh, locking the string at the tuning peg is a great way of keeping your guitar in tune. Okay, this may be the weirdest way you'll ever see anyone explain 
how to lock your strings. What, what a lot of manufacturers do is, let's say this is your string, let's say that's your bridge pin here with the uh, the hole in there ready to go. Basically what a lot of manufacturers do is they'll thread through the string like so and then they'll start turning and turning until your string is up to tension and that's what happens okay. Now when it's up to tension and you bend the string with your fingers because it's not locked by anything that string essentially pulls in a little bit and pulls out and it makes it very, very difficult to achieve standard tuning a lot of the time. You spend a lot of time tuning. So what you need to do is, when you pull your string through, you need to pull it back and either, it doesn't matter if it goes over, then under, or under, then over. What happens is when you create that and you start to wind, it locks, it basically traps the string. And as you start to then tighten it, that string is trapped twice. It's then trapped three times. It's it's really anchored into place so that when you achieve tuning and you've stretched your strings accordingly when you first tune up the guitar with new strings, it's not going anywhere. It will slip out of tune far less and you will thank me for this. When stringing up your guitar, start by placing the new string, ball bearing in first, into the bridge, along with the bridge pin, then pull it tightly over the bridge. When leaving the bridge going up to the headstock, I then turn the tuning peg so that the whole of the tuning peg is in the line with the nut. Thread the string through, tighten it and measure three fingers back to gauge how much slack is required. Pull the string back to recreate the slack, then loop it underneath and go over the top to trap the string. Hold the string on the nut with your thumb nice and tight. Grab your string winder and carefully apply some tension to the string then clip off the excess string. As you can see, Rob has also used the string trapping technique I covered earlier in the video, and this still shot demonstrates it perfectly. See how the string is trapped here? There's no way this guitar is slipping out of tune. After bringing your strings up to tension and completing an initial tune up, we now want to adjust the action and lower the strings closer to the fretboard using the truss rod. Roughly quarter of a turn at a time is plenty. Then keep checking the height of your action until it is comfortable for you. Just be careful not to go too low, as this would cause your strings to buzz on the frets, which will make your guitar sound terrible. Right, you lovely lot, that's about it. We hope that you found this video useful. Absolutely, yeah, and if you've got any questions at all about anything that's in this video, please don't hesitate, just throw your comment down below and we'll do our best to get back to you. As always, please don't forget to like and subscribe. We're Tickety Boo, and we hope you are too.